Chairman Board, uh, if you would please follow along with a copy of the bid uh, announcement solicitations that you have in front of you. Just a couple of things I want to highlight as we go forward. Uh, we call for sealed bids for this project. Uh, and we call for those bids to be received uh, today, October the 29th at 10 a.m. And we did receive those, and, and I'll cover those <coughs> with you in just a moment. Uh, I'd also like to uh, review the work to be done, which you will see highlighted there. Uh, that consists of all furnishing all labor and materials and equipment to complete the necessary addition and renovation to the property that we just purchased at 103 Roosevelt Drive and there are specifications and drawings that outline that work. And uh, it consisted of the renovation of the existing building and a new construction of approximately 1,250 square feet of a wood frame addition with some interior finishing and upgrades. Uh, the contract and timeline is highlighted for you there. It will be awarded through uh, an AIA contract uh, with a stipulated sum and a contract time of 180 consecutive calendar days and all work on the project shall be completed in accordance with the bidding documents including construction documents and project specifications. Just wanted to review that with you so you understand. Excuse me. Well, is there a penalty if they don't meet the 180 days? Uh, no, there is not. Okay. There is no penalty. Uh, the second document in front of you is uh, the signed record of the bids that we received today, and I will just review those with you. Uh, you can see the first bid there from Coffin Construction uh, with a, a deduct that they provided a, on the uh, bid packet, and that base bid was $273,595. Uh, Kellerman Construction Company, base bid $232,455. Quillian Powell Construction Company, $274,900. Taylor Construction Company, $262,557. And True North Construction Company, $244,000. And those bids were received uh, and recorded by Mr. Matt Hart and I this morning at uh, starting at 10. Um, that brings us uh, to this point on our project critical path, and I'd like to review that with you. And that's where we are today, uh, here. Uh, we have received and opened the bids and reported those, and now we're bringing that results to you for your review and consideration of a contract award. Are all those local contractors? Uh, yes, we're gonna go through those okay. in some detail. What I'd like to do now is introduce Mr. Matt Hart and ask Matt to take us through uh, a review of the bids. And Matt, if you'd like, and here's the corner. Now, I'm Matt Hart. I'm with IPG, uh, project manager on the on the project. Uh, to answer your question, uh, four of the five that are listed up here are local. Uh, that would be Coffee Construction, Colorman Construction, Queen Powell Construction, and True North. Uh, Taylor Construction is out of uh, Thomasville. Uh, I'll back up a little bit. Uh, to start this bid process, we actually had a mandatory pre-bid uh, conference here in this room, and then we also visited the site to set up those pre-qualified uh, contractors. Uh, all they had to do was show up, and six general contractors showed up. Uh, one did not pr provide a bid today. That was Barber Construction. Uh, I believe they're out of Moultrie, Georgia. So out of the six, we did receive five bids uh, this morning. Uh, just to sort of uh, housekeeping items, uh, note at the bottom to, to, to not go through each individual bid uh, individually. Uh, all the bidders who attended the bid opening were responsive, meaning that they provided all the information that we asked them to provide in their sealed bids. Each acknowledged the bid numbers number one through three. These were modifications to the bid documents after that pre-proposal conference. They all provided a pro proper bid bond information which was 10% of their bid, and they all indicated 180 consecutive calendar, calendar days to complete the project. Now once we uh, be begin the contract negotiations with the apparent low bidder, uh, at that time there, there is an opportunity for you to talk to him about uh, shortening that time frame. 
Um, if they indicate that they can build it for in 150, then certainly that's you, you have the opportunity to negotiate that with them in the official contract. Uh, going over the bids, as, as Alan mentioned, what I've done here is I've listed out all the alternates. Um, because all the bids came in over this, the, the cost that we were prescribed to design the building to, which was $230,000, the, the procedure for that is to take all of your alternates, and so we've done that here, we've added all the alternates as you see on your bid form. Um, even taking all of those, Keller and Construction was still the, the low bidder. And that contract, uh, as you see here, is $208,233. So even with all the alternates, Keller and is still the low bidder. Just to go over those alternates, uh, alternate number one was to add four additional parking spaces to your current parking lot. Alternate number two was to paint the entire interior of the existing building, that's uh, walls and trim, that doesn't include any ceiling paint, and doesn't include any new floor finishes. So all of the ceilings and floors would stay the same. Alternate number three would uh, paint the entire exterior of the building. Alternate number four would modify the handicap ramp that's currently there on the front of the building. Uh, <coughs> it, upgrade the pickets, provide proper handrails, uh, make it look like it has always been there uh, rather than just an add-on. And then alternate number five was a miscellaneous metals um, piece to remove stair nosings off the front edge of your concrete steps. So with all that being said, um, after reviewing all the bids, uh, we would recommend that uh, the, the base bid of, of $232,445 uh, to be reduced by the uh, 12600 so basically we would recommend um, to not uh, proceed with the parking lot uh, addition or the stair nosings piece, but to, to retain uh, the interior painting, exterior painting, and handicap ramp modifications within the project. So with all that being said, uh, less the alternates, uh, the total contract amount would be $219,845. Where's my Would you back up one slide, yes. uh, Matt, just to make sure we're clear on this. Uh, alternate number one, that was those additional parking spaces in the front that we went ahead and budgeted for anyway, understanding that we might not need those because we have the other flow parking uh, that we negotiated in our sale purchase agreement. So that is, is a logical alternate for us not to have to, uh, to include into the project. Another couple of things. Um, just as, as you get into negotiations with uh, Kellerman Construction, uh, I know there's been some developments on the landscaping uh, between the former property owner, the adjacent property owner, uh, as well as the storm drainage uh, between the two properties. And so we're working with Kellerman and with you all to be sure that all that's fleshed out and you're not paying for things twice. So we're gonna work with them um, to, to get all that square from what you have set in stone with the adjacent property owner and then with what the bids are today. That's correct, and that has to do with that uh, escrow amount that we have uh, in, in the bank now uh, for that landscape. I would also want to add to this that with the uh, Kellerman construction bid, there was one Valdosta Small Emerging Business Contractor in that, that was Griffin uh, Concrete, uh, and that was a uh, an amount uh, for that subcontract is for materials and labor for the concrete work that's associated with the project. So we did have a piece of contract. And, and what was your estimated cost? Two hundred thirty. Two hundred thirty. Another thing that I, I believe Kellerman would, would help you guys out on, uh, especially is even, even though you don't, it may not be considered uh, small emerging businesses. Uh, he can provide you once contracts are set, and he signs his contracts with his subs, uh, a listing of all of his subcontractors that are local. I think that would be a, a good piece to add. Um, he shared with us a few sub, uh, subcontractors today, but of course they're not under contract. Um, I wouldn't share that in open forum, but the idea is that there's a lot of local businesses that are, that are definitely um, helping you out on this project uh, through Kellerman Construction Company. And it's your understanding it's his intention to use as many local as possible. Exactly. That is his intention. We have certainly verified that. As as was his intention to use a big set contractor as he was told. Once his contractor is set, he can provide you a list with all that and we can help facilitate that conversation too. 
if, if you went back with the park and at a later date, got it estimated about 10,000 now, what, what would the estimate of the later date? You know, that's probably one of the pieces that he would do at the very end, mm -hmm. just so he doesn't mess it up as he's backing out of the site. But once the project's built and he sort of cleans up the site, does the landscaping, um, you could definitely re-enter into negotiation with him. Um, I, I was just thinking, you know, sometimes if you, if you don't do a project with that, you may want to sort of bump him out now and go ahead and do that because add 10,000 to more dollars would be just a thousand to it the estimated cost. Right. Uh, another uh, piece that I would also share, uh, with the $219,000, with the 230 that were that we budgeted or that, that you all budgeted, that leaves you about $10,000 for a contingency. And um, with the renovation project, you just never know what you're going to find. Um, so I would, I would recommend, we would recommend that you keep as much of a contingency as you can, <laughs> uh, unless there's other pot of money that you can pull from. Um, having a contingency of 10000 on this size project is probably sufficient if, if issues come up. That's, that's a good contingency. Do you have any other contingencies to all this? So let me ask you, Madam Chairman Board, do you have other questions for Matt on the bidding process and the scope or scale of the bid or how we've addressed the offerings before we give you a recommendation to consider? Uh, anything else, Matt, that you want to add? I guess I should just ask, do you have any concerns whatsoever based on your knowledge of Calvin? Absolutely not. Uh, they're competent. Um, IPG has done a lot of work with them, recent work with them. Um, you can see the, Talk y about some of those projects. the, the YMCA uh, down in Lake Park uh, was a project that Kellerman and IPG worked on together with uh, Larry Toby to get that uh, up and running when they had to move from across the interstate to the Lake Park outlet building. Uh, very good job if you're ever are down in that area. Go inside. It's really neat. Really different than what we have here in Modesto. Uh, the Fun Arts entry modifications were done about a year ago uh, behind BSU. If you attended Pops in the Park or ever over in that area, there's a large shade cell canopy, uh, aluminum canopies that really dressed up that entrance. And then uh, they recently did another shade cell canopy with us at Okie Finoki Tech in Waycross. Uh, Kellerman can provide you references. I know they're doing a lot of work at BSU. Um, and they've, uh, their project manager was telling me they just got a project in Cook County. I mean, it, so they're a very reputable company, and we have no issues working with them. Yeah. Well, thank Who's you. the principal of True North? I'm not exactly sure. But I, I do know uh, Sonny and Jody Schwab uh, are the project managers and estimators. I, I believe that's through a Walt Gill mm -hmm. Enterprise. Oh, OK. I just, I, I, that was new when I had my program. I believe they just changed names or created oh, okay. a new company in the, in the recent past. I believe that's correct. Yeah. Madam Chairman, board, any other questions, concerns? Then, uh, Madam Chairman, board members, our recommendation to you would be that we accept the low bid by Kellerman Construction Company and we begin negotiations for, for the local contract. Uh, through uh, IPG who will do that contract work for us and we'll develop that contract and then bring that to you for your final review and signature. Okay. So moved. A second. Okay. All in favor? Any? And, are we, we going to leave the estimated 230 in there if this is recommendation or else it, it continues to? Yep, that would be my recommendation that we do that. As we do the contract amount, we'll incorporate that in as a contingency. And, and that is typically what we do. So is the contract of the 219 845 for the contingency the difference of 230? Yes, sir. I mean, it still has to be negotiated. We do have this escrow issue, so it may not be that exact. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> that's right. We that's do right. have a few other negotiation points. That's where you're going to start. Right? That's where we're going to start. Uh, and when we spoke with the contractor this morning, we talked about, uh, you know, time to negotiate the contract and mobilization, and we certainly feel we can do all that within two weeks. So this will get underway very quickly. We'll, we'll okay, I'm not sure we had a complete vote there. So all in favor? Raise your hand. Okay, any opposed? Okay, then we unanimous, which we need since we only have three. 
Thank you, Madam Chairman of the Board. We appreciate your time today. We know you have busy and demanding schedules, and we know this is lunch. Uh, we thank you for your work, and we have provided lunch for you, and we would invite you to stay and enjoy lunch with us. Thank you. Can I just, it's not on the agenda, but with a call meeting, do we have to have time for, or should we call for assistance to her, and we don't have to do that on the call meeting? Okay, just handle one item. All right, we do appreciate very much all of our attendees being here with us, and um, thank you very much, and the meeting is adjourned. All right. Good job, man. Thank you.